So Mark, uh, Heritage Planet Night Auction for the 2018 Fun Show kicks the year off. With a lot of uh, questions about the health and the, the vibrancy of the classic U.S. coin market will be answered in the next few days. Um, you put together an amazing catalog of uh, some rare uh, coins, some perennial favorites, and also some new discoveries. Uh, you have one coin right now, it's a $20 gold piece, an 1856 O, which is a very scarce piece that has just turned up, and I want to know a little bit about it and how it came to the market. Well, this particular coin uh, came to us from Europe. Okay. And basically they were paying for the, the imports coming into this country. Right. The 1856 O is a classic rarity in the United States gold series. It's one of the 100 greatest U.S. coins. Right. There were 2,250 1856 O double eagle struck. Right. And today there are two dozen now. Uh, this being the 24th piece discovered. So uh, also, you know, another 20 that I liked in your catalog to, and I wanted to talk about because, uh, you know, pe people look at proof issues these days and they just seem like, you know, every year you go to the mint, you buy a proof issue, but you don't realize that, you know, in the mid 19th century, proofs were much, uh, struck in much lower numbers, especially for the major gold coins. The Philadelphia Mint struck exactly 50 proof double eagles. Right. Uh, this was during the Civil War. There was little demand, uh, especially for the larger gold coins in the 1860s. Mm -hmm. I mean, $20 in 1864 was a substantial amount of money. Right. And very few collectors could afford to put away $20 each year to collect proof double eagles. Right. But a few did. Today we know of about 15 examples that survive in all proof grades. This piece, although not one of the finest known, uh, is a spectacular cameo proof. Uh, uh, it's got uh, great contrast and a wonderful look to it. Right. Well, the other thing you got to keep in mind, like the the amount of preservation and the the way that coins are handled, the way they were packaged and sent. I mean, to have a 1860 proof in spectacular state of preservation it's almost would take a miracle of handling. These these coins were. Uh, wrapped in tissue paper mm -hmm. um, at the time they were produced. And uh, then the collectors put them in their coin cabinets, uh, which are basically cabinets with drawers that you pulled out, pushed out. And um, because of that, they, they did not necessarily survive in, in top condition. So Mark, the 1943 Lincoln Cent the steel scent has been a novelty collectible since it was released to the public during the middle of World War II. But almost as instantaneous as that coin was a sensation amongst the American people, so was the prospect of finding one struck accidentally in copper, uh, the first one being uh, discovered the year of issue, and then several, not many, but several trickling out out of the woodwork over the, the decades. Heritage Auctions is getting ready to, to sell two of these ultra rare pieces at the Platinum Night Auction here at the Fun Show. The 1943 Steel Cents, uh, the whole coinage was issued as a result, obviously, of World War II when copper was needed for the war effort. It was a strategic metal, and the Mint was looking for alternatives, and they did a lot of experimentation in 1942 with various different uh, types of materials to try and find an alternative for the copper penny or In set. Including glass. Including glass. We, uh, I think last year at the fund sale, we uh, had a, a 1942 pattern glass scent that was... Uh, intact, uh, not even broken. Yeah. Intact, and yeah. it was pretty amazing. Uh, and that was just one of the many. They experimented with plastic. Finally, uh, they decided that steel would be the uh, best alternative to replace copper in the 1943 cents. And they only issued the steel cents for one year. Uh, what was interesting is the following two years, 1944 and 45, the cents were called shell case cents. Right. And they were actually, they took the old uh, shell casings uh, from, that were recovered from the, the war and they melted those down and they used those to uh, produce the 1944 and 1945 Lincoln cents. But in 1943, uh, with the uh, advent of the steel scent, there were just a very small number of Lincoln scents produced in copper, by mistake. What 
as near as we can tell, what happened is there were some blank planchets, 1940, for leftover from 1942, the copper blanks, right. that were stuck somewhere in the crevices of the large tote bins that contained the steel planchets for 1943. And as those planchets went through the minting procedure, a few of these copper planchets became unstuck in the, the crevices. So we are offering a 1943 uh, copper, or bronze technically is what it is, uh, a 1943 copper scent uh, uh, from Philadelphia. Now this particular piece is especially interesting because down at the bottom you see an, a raised lump of metal, which is a, a die break. Uh, we call them cuds. Right. And um, I have uh, no recollection of having ever seen a 1943 steel scent with that same die break. It should exist because these were all struck from the same dies that were used for production, but I don't recall having ever seen one. Yeah, so, and, and die cuts even on 20th century coinage isn't as prevalent as it would have been in the 18th or 19th century American that's coinage. That's exactly right. So yeah. uh, any, any cut on a, on a 20th century coin is unusual to start with, and uh, this particular piece is especially interesting because of that characteristic. The other piece we're offering, the very next lot in our Platinum Night Sale, uh, and these can all be viewed at HA.com, our website. Uh, this particular piece is a San Francisco mint uh, bronze scent from 1943. Um, while the Philadelphia piece is graded Mint State 61 Brown, this 1943S uh, bronze scent is graded AU53 by NGC. So it's not quite the same quality, but it's a little bit rare and uh, uh, both of these might be considered the holy grail for Lincoln scent collectors. Well, let's well, let's talk about grade for a minute because you bring up a very good point. If that if that piece was in AU fifty three, then it probably saw, I, I wouldn't say a tremendous amount of circulation. These these copper or bronze scents did wear, you know, within a few years they would wear down to extra fine. It's a surprising to me how many nineteen sixteen D mercury dimes you find in good or about good when that was always scarce. But that something like this would have... Yeah, a 1916D Mercury Dime was always scarce, but there were not the number of collectors at that time trying to fill collections of coins from circulation. Mm -hmm. So even though they were scarce, they, very few were saved until many years later. Right. So, um, you know, don't hold out your hope, collectors, but there is a chance if you uh, get unsearched bulk volume of uh, wheat scents that one of these may have slipped through the cracks. And There, there have been a few of these uh, that have been discovered more recently. Uh, uh, so there's always that possibility. Um, the big thing we find today is that uh, uh, many collectors come to us, or, or I should say non-collectors, the, the non-collecting public will come to us and say, oh, I have one of those. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a very simple test. Um, if it sticks to a magnet, it's not one of these. Right. Uh, there have been many of the 1943 steel scents that people have copper plated to try and pass them off as the 43 bronze scents. Right. And uh, you just have to have a magnet and you're going to know that it's actually steel and not copper. 